we thank you. It's such a honor and privilege to call you our Father. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you will please touch our hearts today. Touch our spirit. Help us know who we really are. I pray for someone watching this video right now. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. That person that is feeling lonely, they feel like they have no one to support or to help them. They, they just, the feeling of frustration is there. Holy Spirit, I want you to touch that person's heart. To let them know who they really are. That they are sons and daughters of God. Holy Spirit, let that person, let someone feeling depressed. Thank you, Lord. Someone who felt like, how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? Someone saying, you don't understand. You don't understand is not the same. Help them know, Lord, that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Let them feel the comfort of the Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you right now that you will stretch forth your hand in your mercy to receive someone like the story we read in the scripture about the prodigal son. The story was the story of a prodigal son, but actually the real story was the story of a prodigal father. Someone who is willing and ever ready to celebrate someone who have wasted their life. I ask you that you will stretch forth your hand and you will receive somebody back today into the embrace of your love. The father said, my son has come back home. Let us celebrate. Lord, celebrate. Let someone feel celebrated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for that person, Lord. I pray for that person, Lord, feeling coming under the guilty of the consequence of abortion. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will remove that spirit of guilt. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help someone to forgive themselves today. Help somebody to know that Whatever they face this week, they are not alone. They are not alone. They are not alone. Help somebody know that I have a father who will never leave me. Jesus will never forsake me. He say, I have a father who will never leave me. Let somebody know. Let that be somebody, let it be somebody's testimony today in the name of Jesus. Show up for somebody, Lord, that has just the last meal. I said, someone now, this is the last that I have. And I come as your servant, as your prophet. And I declare that that which you cause last. That which you call last meal will last for several days in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, all I'm asking you to do through this message is that, Lord, there will be a turnaround in somebody's heart. Someone is going to repent as a result of this message. Lord, this message is going to cut through someone's heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you because you have healed somebody with a problem 
the, with the problem in the right right uh, side of the left ear. I don't know, maybe somebody has problem with something called firings or something like that. The power of the Lord is upon you right now and the Lord has healed you. Lord, we thank you for this anointing. Your word says that you know more than our need and I thank you for making somebody whole today. I remove that cloud, that dark cloud that represent the spirit of death. Someone you had a dream last night and you're watching this video and you have asked God for a confirmation that said what I saw in the dream. I want to know whether it's true and he said let me hear a message that will confirm. This is a confirmation. Our Lord, I thank you as I give your word right now that that coffin is passed over you in the name of Jesus. The Lord has given you another chance. That's the word of the Lord. He said, the Lord have given you, has given you another chance. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that your goodness will lead us to repentance. Your goodness, your kindness, your mercy to us will help us to have a change of heart and direction. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you. I will try and make it quick. I know you could be doing 1,000 things. And um, uh, nowadays, uh, videos... Um, Videos from, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> the message of the word of God is not necessarily things that um, people really want to watch. But I just want to crave um, your indulgence to just uh, give me a few minutes of your time. Uh, and I will try as much as possible. Uh, to make it very quick, you know, and um, to give you the word of the Lord today. We have been talking about the subject of the sure mercies of David. When the Lord gave us this word last year for this season, um, he said, come unto me, incline your ear and listen, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David, and we call it the sure mercies of God. But the Lord said, No, I know that I'm a God that is full of mercies. But what I told you is the sure mercies of David. And we have brethren in the house, we have people who have testified to the mercy of God in their life. They said, They know, I know I didn't deserve that, but I know that the mercy of God made that to happen any 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 witness in the house anybody testifying to say yes i know i got certain things because of god mercy can i get a witness in the house i go i know i i knew i got some things because of god's mercy okay so we are going to continue with our series and um we said the scripture that the Lord gave us in Isaiah chapter 55, when you look at the sum total of that scripture, come, incline your hair, and then hear. That's what's supposed to take place in the place of prayer. And we read the scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, where it said, Let us therefore come boldly to where? To the throne of grace, so that we might do what? We might receive mercies. So we have been looking at the subject how to receive the mercy of God. And I want to say something very quickly. When we are talking about this type of mercy, this type of mercy that I am talking about is not the mercy we receive every day. Okay, it is of the mercies of the Lord that we are not. Um, 
consumed. Are you with me? It's of the mercy of the Lord that we are not what? We are not consumed, but that's not the mercy that I am talking about today. I am talking about the mercy God all promise us is what? Sure mercies of David. It is a kind of mercy that David received. And there's something unique about that mercy. It wasn't just a mercy for David. It was a mercy that covers the descendants of David. How about you doing something that we outlast or we outlive you? Your children, children will begin to enjoy just because of what the Lord promised to you. Like the Lord gave a word to Abraham, he said, In you shall all the nations of the earth be what? Be blessed. That's, the, that's a covenant word. So when God promised David he, this mercy, he made it a covenant. And there's something that I think we should go there and um, we should read that scripture in 2 Samuel chapter 7. And God says something there. He said to David, he said, this, this mercy that I am giving you is not the type of mercy that I gave to Saul. Are you with me? So when we are talking about how to receive the mercy of God through prayer, I want you to know that, you know, it, it, the, what God said, he said, he said, the type of mercy that I am giving you, he said, he said, verse 15, Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 15, he said, but my mercy and loving kindness shall not depart from him as I took them from Saul, whom I took away before you. Can you see that scripture? That means that what? Mercy can be taken away. Are you with me? That means was God, God doesn't need to kill anybody. All that God will just do is just to take away his mercy, and the devil will be on rampage. Thank you. You can take the scripture down. So I said this to people. Uh, people are not going to hell. They are in hell already. When you read John chapter 3 very well, he said, Whosoever believe, you will be taken out of hell. So God is not really, <laughs> we need to read the scripture correctly. Sending anybody to hell. People have enough hell already. But when you believe in Jesus Christ, you are taken away from it. I love what somebody said. He said, everybody's name is written in the book of life. And that's why the scripture says that whose name was not found. So that means the name was there at a point in time. But guess what? It was removed. Are you with me? Or maybe there was an eraser or something like that. I don't know whether <laughs> that is correct spiritually. But let's keep to the subject today. We now said, in order to get that type of mercy, the type of mercy that cannot be taken away, one of the mechanisms through which we can get that is through prayer. So, in this particular series we are in, we want to talk about four things. Number one is we want you to become, or God wants us to become a house of prayer for all nations. And that was what we discussed in our last video. And I'm going to take that to another step today. So please, the video is available on our YouTube channel. God wants you, let's say, say God wants me to become a house of prayer for all nations. One of the things we said in that video is that God doesn't want you to just go for prayer meeting. He wants you to be what? To have what? A prayer meeting. Do you know the difference? Most time we attend prayer meetings at church of fellowship and which is good. But God is now saying that actually what I want is for you to have prayer meeting. Brother Buki, who are you going to be having prayer meeting with? Have prayer meeting with the Holy Ghost. Have prayer meeting. He said, the Lord will give us understanding. 
When we pray in tongues, many of us don't know what we do when we pray in tongues. Uh, most of the things that we do today are religion. We don't even understand some of the things that we do. Are you with me? Do you know what happens when you pray in tongues? Let's take our scripture because my goal is I really want thing, people to be doing things in a different way. Because most of the things that we are doing now is clear that we are not, the result we are getting is not directly proportional to the answer, uh, uh, sorry, to the input that we are making. Uh, we will have a large crusade. I read in the scripture that I said Jesus healed all of them. Isn't that what you read in the scripture? For the type of crusade that we have today, there will be about 1,000 people or 5,000 people in the crusade. You will hardly find 10 or 100 people being healed. And then we put it on the pages of news. We make some noise about it. And everybody will be shouting, what happened in the day of Jesus when everyone was healed? If you read the stories of the disciples in the Bible, the Bible says that they did mighty miracles all over the place. We have not even done half of what they did. But there is too much noise. So it's important that we begin to get understanding. Are you with me? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. So God said he wants us to have what? Prayer meetings. So if God said he wants us to have prayer meetings, let's get understanding. Who does he want you to have prayer meetings with? He said, your focus has been, my focus has been what? Going for prayer meeting, attending what? Prayer meeting. Uh, prayer meeting, 7 a.m. You, you don't even hear most of the things that they are doing. Some of us, when you are attending that prayer meeting, you are watching something else. Uh -huh. you are, you're smiling. I'll go there. I will help you. Are you following me? Some of you, you, you just put up, you, they forwarded the link to you, and all you just say, say and then all of a sudden you say, Amen, 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 Amen. Maybe the man of God say, he will, he will cut off this year. You don't know what he said that he will cut off this year. You just say what? Amen. Man, pray. Somebody is believing God for a triplet. And you, you already have enough children. You don't want more. And then they say, in the name of Jesus. You just say, amen. But I'm going to show you something today. Something that is wrong with most of those prayer meetings that we have been doing. Including the one that I'm doing. I'm going to show you something. We're going to do series on praying to our Heavenly Father because it's a big revelation. It's something. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, who are you to have fellowship with? Because I really want to help us. 1 Corinthians 14, 14, amplify only. Let's look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15, amplify version. Are you with your Bible with me? He said, for if I pray, let's read it together on the screen. He said, well, one to go, let's read it together on the screen. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prays. Let's stop there. Let's read it out again. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by what? By the Holy Spirit within me prays. Can you now see that you can have what? A prayer meeting. Do you understand what I mean now? So when God gives us an instruction and God say he expects us to do things, he will show us in the scripture. So you can imagine when you go and attend prayer meeting, you are having a prayer meeting with your brothers and with your sister. So what you then do is that all the prayer requests that you have, you have to keep them and you have to wait until Tuesday. Until 7 a.m. in the morning. Are you following me? Until maybe 10 p.m. And some of them, thank you, you can take the scripture down. And some of them, you, they will say, you have to wake up at 1 a.m. and pray. Isn't that correct? But the scripture here says that rather than you waiting to attend that prayer meeting, what did he say you should do? Have a prayer meeting. Let's say it together. I said, the Lord wants me to have a prayer meeting with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand now? Let's say it one more. I said the Lord wants me to have a prayer meeting with the Holy Spirit. You know, I know some of the things that I am going to be saying, some people are going to be wondering, well, where is all this thing coming from? Where did he get that from? Brother Paul didn't get most of the things he wrote 
from any book. Are you with me? Um, the Lord was saying this to me. He said something to me. He said, uh, the, the, the greatest thing that can happen to anybody in this life is to get revelation. Bring something out from the realm of the spirit that people will benefit from forever. Are you with me? Don't just live on planet Earth to use what others have produced. Create something. And I pray today in the name of Jesus that the ability to create, to bring about innovation will come on you in the name of Jesus. I know people have been eating jollof rice, but you believe God to begin to cook something, another type of jollof rice that they will call a new name. And they will attach that to your name. Have prayer meeting with the Holy Ghost. Let's say it one more time. Have prayer meeting with the Holy Spirit. So, we said in the book of Isaiah chapter 56, God said, I will make them joyful in the house of prayer. So, the primary purpose of a prayer is what? Joy. The first, uh, not the primary for it. Let me rephrase that again. The first outcome in the place of prayer is what? Is joy. And we all know that joy is different from happiness. Sister Happy, are you listening to me? Uh, when you see a beautiful car, you are happy, you are excited. Uh, you're, you're somebody bought a house for you, you are happy. Are you following me? But joy is something that's on the inside. You are joyful whether the situation is good or bad. But you are what? You are joyful. Thank you, Lord. Somebody just got healed right now. Right now. The pain is like, I felt like pain. Something leaving my body right now. Somebody just got healed. Lord, lift up your hands and just thank God for that. Lord, I thank you and I give you praise for that. Glory be to God. It doesn't matter when you are watching this video. You just go healed at this point in this video. The power of the Lord just came upon you right now. I, I felt like something left your body. Lord, I give you praise for that. So, the first outcome in the place of prayer is what? Is joy. And joy comes when you hear what the Lord has to say about the issue. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. I want to show you how to perceive God's grace in prayer. Look, let me tell you something. Um, prayer isn't just about shouting. We've missed the trick because we go for night fidget. I did that and we come back the same way. Uh, and I hope that I'm able to cover everything I want to show you. Prayer is so easy. So let's start and look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. He taught us about prayer. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to be reading Message Bible Translation. Let's look at verse 6 first. The first thing that needs to happen in our prayer prayer life, when we pray every time. And prayer doesn't necessarily mean you can pray on the bus, you can pray in your car, you can pray. The most important thing is that when you pray, there has to be what? A shift in focus. Uh, uh, somebody said to me, I said, oh yes, you know, when you are driving, you are supposed to concentrate on the road. Your mind is supposed to fix on it. But do you even know that as you are driving on the road, that the Lord can teach you about how to drive. If your focus is on him, that's prayer. Because prayer is dialogue. Somebody say, oh, what's he talking about? He's, he, 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 he has come. Look, look, they said that about Jesus Christ. Because they were all full of a bunch of religious people. And I said to people today, and I know this video might offend you at this particular point in time, but I have no apology. Because people begin to fight themselves and say, I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm a Muslim. What religion did Abraham and yet, he is the father of faith, isn't he? <laughs> both both the, 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 the people who are called Christians, are you not a Christian? The world called us Christian. Jesus called me his what? His follower or believer. I, I want to be known as a disciple of Jesus. No apology because I don't want to be called by... You see, you see that's, that's, that's the problem, my brother. That's the problem, my brother. 
you are you are you are living by the name they call you he said he said and you begin to cry uh, he said i am not beautiful S says who okay let me talk to some husband in this place today have you found have you found a situation whereby you didn't even you look at your wife you did not comprehend her or, or the woman and then you look at your man, you, you said that he, he's not doing anything, you didn't compliment him, and then both of you went outside. This person that you did not compliment, somebody look and say, say wow, that earring looks lovely on you. Have you, anybody experienced that kind of a thing? And you look at somebody, you commonize them, and then you go outside, somebody, somebody else, compliment that particular thing that you have despised. Uh, they say, is there something like the beauty is in the eyes of the beholder? You know, the problem we have today is that we are worried because of the name people call us. You don't know who you really are. Are you with me? So, Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. So, in prayer, what's the key thing? The most important thing in prayer is, they look at it, they said, Jesus speaking here. I wish it can be in the red letter. Let's read it. Say, here is what I want you to do. Say, Jesus said what? Find a quiet. Okay, let's go to verse 5 so that somebody knows that he is talking about prayer. So I can help somebody. Let's go to verse 5 so that I can help somebody. Please, can I have your attention? I want to get you. And I say, when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. That's what most of us are doing now. You say, all these people making a regular show out of their prayer. Is that not what we are doing today in church? You know, when I. You have some people stand and say, and the pastor is there. Oh, la 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 ba. Hey, la 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 la. Are you funny? And then you have some people say, hey, de 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 de. Ah, la 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 la. You just like we have turned it. It's like you know. <laughs> okay, let's put the scripture down first and foremost. Um, you know, you know, you know, because I know I have Muslim audience. Do you know the reason why we have the people they call um, what they call um, uh. I like know it in Yoruba language. Translator. Is it translator? Arawasi or something like that. Sorry, I should uh, interpreter. Do you know the reason why they had that? They, they got it from Moses. And do you know the reason why Aaron had to interpret what Moses had to say? It was because he couldn't speak eloquently. So you don't need somebody else to repeat what you have said. It's religion. Go and check the scripture very well. And I told people, I said, look, God's original intention was not to even have a pastor over people. If you're a pastor, you don't believe what I said, message me. Let's have a conversation about it. I'll show you in the scripture. When they left the land of Egypt, God told Moses, he said, tell all of them to come to me. He said, I want to talk to them what? directly. And the people said, when they saw the glory of God, the people said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you go and talk to him. And whatever he said to you, come and tell us. That was the genesis. That was how the priesthood and the Levitical order and all, all the things, that was how it was set up. Are you with me? So you don't need an interpreter in the place of prayer. You don't need a middleman. But look at what Jesus said. Let's go back to that scripture because uh, I'm being pulled in different directions now. Uh, 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 let's look at Matthew chapter 6. I want to show you something. He said, there is no performance. He said, he said, look, he said, don't think God sees in a box seat. I love message Bible translation. Are you with me? Let's go to the next verse, which is the thing I want to talk about. He now said, well, look at it. Next verse, say what? He said, here is what I want you to do. Hello? Are you listening, brothers and sisters? This is what Jesus wants you to do. What did he want you to do? He said, what? Find a quiet place. He used the word, find a quiet, secluded place. So you won't be tempted to do what? To replay before God. Calm down. God wants your attention. And look at what he said. Just be there as what? As simply and honestly as you can manage. Look at the point I want you to look at. What's that point? He said what? The focus will shift from you to God. And what? And you will begin to sense His grace. Is that ministering to someone? Can you see the problem with our prayer? 
where is the focus of our prayer today? His pastor, his prophetic word. Are you with me? Thank you. You are smiling, my sister. Am I right? Am I right? The focus of our prayer is what? Daddy, pray for us. Abi, is that not the focus of our prayer? Daddy, pray for us. Somebody will travel 3,000 miles, spend hours, a lot of money on the, pay, on the plane to go and see daddy. And they have not paid tight in their church. They have not given any offering. The focus of our prayer today is daddy. Is mommy. Is not God. And I will show you another focus of our prayer today. The focus of our prayer today is what is on our heart. Or what is in our heart. And people tell me and say, oh, but we can't hear God. You know, you see, it's like, it bothers me sometimes, I, especially people who come to our fellowship and they say something, how do we hear God? And I'll go back to God. You know, like somebody, something happened that day. And, and the person says, Pastor, we did everything to told us to do, and yet I lost him. Ah, I felt bad. So I went before God and I said, Lord, you hear what this person said. Say, so how do I help this person? Now the Lord said, don't worry, go to the house. Go to her house. And when you get to her house, tell her to tell you the story. The person is not, I don't want to, you understand, not how him, I don't want to. Say, the, let the person narrate the story. I said, you will find answer in the story that the person narrate that I am a faithful God. That's why one of the key lessons I've learned today is to always judge God faithful. Because you don't know the whole story. You don't know what happened in the background. You don't know how much God has tried to help that particular person, but they just refused. Are you with me? We should never lose confidence on faith in God based on what happened to someone or what does not happen to them. So Jesus said, the focus should shift to God, from you to God. When you come in the place of prayer, our focus is on our needs. Are you following? Let me address that. Our focus is what? Is on our needs. Let me address that. Let's go back to that Matthew chapter 6. And I want to show you something. Let's go to verse 7. The focus, when we come to a place of prayer, the focus is on our Let's read the next verse. The next verse said, The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are what? Prayer ignorant. These are not my words, though. These are the words of the master. And he now said, let's go to the next verse because of our time. Look at the, the next verse. The next verse said, 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 don't fall for that. Then verse 8, quickly. Verse 8, quickly, message Bible translation. Okay, he said, don't fall for that nonsense. And look at what he said. This is your father you are dealing with. And he knows better than you what you need. Thank you, man. Now, um, no, before we go to the Lord's Prayer, uh, the Lord's Prayer is, 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 is five-hour sermon. Let's not go there. Let's go to, let's keep that verse 8. Let's stay in that verse 8. Let's say, let's say, say, say my heavenly father knows better than me. Say, my heavenly father knows more about what I need than I do. Say, my heavenly father knows more about what I need that I, than I do. He said, my heavenly father knows more about what I need than I do. So let me explain that to you. Let's take the scripture down. Let me just explain that in 60 seconds. It simply means this. You want healing. But God knows how you got into the health problem. He doesn't just want to heal you. He wants to tell you that after I have healed you, if you don't address this issue, you're going to need another healing. But his plan for your life is to be what? Is to be in health. Not to need healing all the time. A child of God, healing is not for a believer. 
Hey, somebody said, what is he talking about? No, 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 no. He, he, he said to them, he said, I am the Lord God that heals you. In the book of Exodus, go and read that particular scripture very well. It's a continuous tense. That means as, as germs, virus, or whatever falls into your body, you are what? You are healed already. Your cells, and the scientists, are, I, I can't go into detail, your cell replenishes itself. Do you need to do anything for yourself to multiply, for yourself to replenish it? He said, when you say uh, your, your blood level is low, after some time, what the, the system, the, the way our system is, is configured is to replenish, to replace dead cell. So God's plan for a believer is not for you to be queened up in healing line all the time. People who are doing that for you want to exploit you. They are not telling you the truth. So, your father knows more than you about your need. He wants to tell you that, look, me giving you a job is not the problem. I will give you a job, but I need to show you how to do what? How to keep your job. Are you with me? Uh, there are some pastors that some members will not want to have them as their pastor, when they come to another world. Are you with me? I am telling you, there are so many Christian marriages today that the reason they are still married is because <laughs> the word of God says, don't divorce. Are you with me? There are workers today, you are working in an organization, somebody takes you in, that person will not hire you again. When I do supervision for my direct report, there are some of them that are just like, Lord, hmm. if I see the name of this person, they thank God because when people apply, you won't see their name. But if I have the opportunity of seeing the name of this person, I, I, I will just say, okay, thank you very much. You know what that means? Because I'm on national TV. Are you with me? There are some people you don't want to work with them again. There are some bosses. I, I mean, I, I told one boss one day, I say I don't just work. I think I say I don't just work for any organization. I've got into that level in my life now where I don't just take any job. The person I'm going to work for is important. Uh, look, I am telling you, it doesn't matter who that person is. If anybody tells you that they are managing you, you have no business being with that person. You have no business being with anybody that you are managing. You are just wasting your time. If anybody tells you that they are managing you, they will never appreciate you. Are you listening to me today? I, I don't even know how I got into that. Uh, what was the last thing I said before that? You have to help me to bring me back. Okay. So, the focus needs to shift to God because there are so many things that God wants to talk to you. So, the, the, the first thing in the place of prayer is what God has to say about the issue. Now, my prayers, uh, language have changed now. You know, when I pray now, I listen more. I listen more. So, when you pray, you listen more. You want to know what God wants to say concerning the issue. You want, you want to come before God. He said, uh, David said, he said, search my heart. Isn't that, isn't that right? He said, you want to come before God. He said, search my heart. He said, Lord, search my heart. He said, I want to know more. You want God to tell you why you are failing in the business because God hasn't got any problem bringing customer. It's about keeping the customer. Are you with me? Oh, yeah, you got that contract. You did the work for that particular person, but they were not happy paying you that money. Are you with me? You are a tenant, but your landlord wouldn't give you house. He's already thinking of how to eject you from the house. Because the man has to chase you to collect his rent. And you are a landlord. The only reason the tenant is still living in your house is because they do not what? They do not have any choice. Are, are, you, are you with me? Are you with me? So God wants to talk to you about all those things where? In the place of prayer. You see, this thing, God showed me things. He said, and let me use two quickly, two quick, at least one illustration to you. When Elijah 
was discouraged and was about to die. He said to God, he said, I'm about to, he said, Lord, kill me. I'm the only one. I don't want to go there. First Kings chapter 18 or 19 or there about, you know, and he came into the presence of God. You will think that when finally Elijah, the first thing Elijah said to God, he said, he said, look, every other person, they have left you. I am the only one left and things and stuff like that. What do you think God's response should be first? You should talk to him about that, isn't it? Okay, because somebody needs to get revelation. Let's go there. Because, because uh, I, I don't want to be, so that it doesn't look like, oh, this pastor, uh, we don't know. Where, where does he get all these things that he's saying? Where does he get it from? I got it from the Holy Ghost. Because he opened my eyes to see some things. Um, so let, let's go to um, First Kings chapter 19. It, it, that's where we have it. So, so he said, verse 10. Um, uh, no, no, for our time. Okay, verse. <laughs> Let's look at verse 14. Let's follow it. Are you with your Bible? Have you opened your Bible? There was somebody, something was heavy on his mind. And he went before God, just like all of us. When we go into the presence of God, and there's a lot of things, we go before our boss. We want to ask him questions, isn't it? We just want to tell him our mind. You, you have a request to make. You want to. So he said, and Elijah said again, I've been walking. Look at it. I even have. Thank you. God bless you, man. Thank you for putting this. He said, I've been walking my heart out for God. Isn't many of us saying that I'm going to come into the place of prayer? He said, but God, you know I serve you. You know I pay my tithe. You know I pay my offering. You know I did this. I am that. We are telling God about as if God doesn't know. As if God doesn't know that you are, you are telling God, hey, this leg is spreading me out. As if God doesn't know. That the leg is what is paining you. You are telling God and saying, oh, but God, oh, oh, Lord, if you don't do something, uh, they were going to eject me. Ah, before you came to him, he knows everything. He can see everything. He knows what you are going to. Is this message going to give somebody rest today? There is nothing. God is not Brother Buki that doesn't know all things. God is not your pastor. God is not your prophet that only knows what you tell him. Is, that, is this helping somebody? Is this helping somebody? God is not, your father is not the prime minister that does not know the economy situation of tomorrow. Your heavenly father is not like the central bank governor that they are just, they are just chasing the shadows and they are like, we don't know what to do. Look, the Lord knows where the next wind is going to come from. And he can say, this wind, the same way this storm is coming, if he doesn't slow down, he's going to wipe out the whole of this country. And the Lord has even stopped some storm before he came to you. Come before the place of prayer. Look at it. He said say again, he said, because the people of Israel have abandoned your covenant. Do you think God knows about that? Are you following me? Please, please. I need your attention. I will round up now. I, I haven't reached half of my message. I'll round up now. But look, he said, he said, destroy your places of worship and murder your prophet. And I am the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me. Can you see that? This thing is killing me. Let's go to the next one. He said, I'm the only one left. What do you think God should say? You know, before we go there, everybody, respond to me online. That's it. If we, what do you think God says? Go back to that verse. What do you think God's answer should be to somebody that complains like that? Uh, the God answer first and foremost should be what? Uh, they are not going to kill you. Isn't it? They are not going to kill you. And God, let's be practical. And then God will tell him, and they will tell him, say, oh, really? You mean you are the only one left? And God will be empathizing with him. Ah, uh, sorry, oh, uh, you mean although, uh, you know, uh, Sister Janet, you know, do you know Sister Janet? Sister Janet is even fornicated. They'll say, God will now say, eh, hey, truly. And Sister Rebecca did that. say, eh, hey, He does, he looked my husband did not. Say, God will say, oh, your husband, you mean he did that? You are telling somebody that knows all things as if he doesn't know. Are you with me? As if he doesn't know. You know, when the children of Israel, when they sin, right there where Moses was in the presence of God, Guess what God told Moses? He said, your people are what? They have sinned. Before Moses got there. So what was the basis for Moses getting angry? God told you, he said, before you got there. Because Moses now got there, he saw the people, he was angry. Why are you angry? 
God told you some things and you are angry. For what now? So look at it. He said, oh, your prophet, you they destroy your places of worship. Something is happening. Some people, the way they carry the church on their head today, something else. As if God doesn't know. As if God doesn't know about the state of the church. Now, let's go to the next verse. If this is going to help somebody. You will thought that God will respond to the request of Elijah first, isn't it? But guess what? We are using this scripture to illustrate one point that your heavenly father knows more than what you need. You are talking about getting an accommodation right now. God is thinking about your future. Something more important than the accommodation. That you can get a house, but something is going to happen. You're going to lose your job in the next three months. And you will not be able to afford that house. So let's talk about how we're going to fix you. To have what? A stable income. So that you will not just be able to get a house of 1,000 pounds, but you'll be able to do what? Buy your own house. But we go in the place of prayer with a narrow mind. Please, can, I, can you give me video? Uh, let's take it down before I talk about this. Let me tell you something. Our problem is that we go in the place of prayer trying to put God in a box. I just want him to talk to me about what I want to hear. I need an answer to this. You know, I gave up long time ago about questioning God. Are you with me? I, now, when I pray, I, I just say, Lord, <laughs> you know, I read a scripture that transformed my life. I think it's in the book of Proverbs chapter 19 or something like that. He said, he said we may make, he said, many are in the plans of the heart of a man. Only in the counsel of the Lord shall stand. When you look at the common English translation of that Bible, it said, we make many plans in our heart. He said, but the Lord will only do what he has decided. The, way, the, way, the day I got that revelation, I stopped. Do you, do you know the most important to me now? It's all what God wants to do. <laughs> it's, it's what, if if any, anybody is stressing me, I'll just say, Lord, I know you know. So just tell me how I'm going to go through this. Are you following me? There is no more... Uh, I mean, if, I, if I, I pray, there's a place for you to pray passionately. When I pray passionately, it, it wasn't about my need. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, when I'm sick, if I'm diagnosed with any illness or anything like that, all I'm just going to say is that, okay, Lord, am I, is it time? Is the time up? Am I going to die now? <laughs> I say, all I just want is I just give me time. Uh, just tell me so I know. I can change all my bank details. And all the money I pass to wife, I pass to children, I give to people I want to give to. And I just say, bye-bye to everybody. Have a nice time. Uh, but, say, but why is he talking about death? Already? Because I'm not afraid of death. I am not afraid. The only thing I'm afraid of, I tell you today, the only thing I'm afraid of, and that is what you should be afraid of. Jesus said, do not be afraid of him who can kill you. He said, be afraid of him who has who has the power to kill and cast you or make you to live in hell forever? I am afraid. The thing that I am afraid of is I'm afraid of him saying to me that when you were on earth as my servant, you used my name to make yourself feel important. I'm afraid of him telling me, go away. I don't see. I don't want to know you. Get away from my side. Because I know beyond the grave, whatever I do on earth, once I am lower down, six feet, there is no repentance in grave. Go and search the scripture very well. Otherwise, to be honest, if there's repentance in grave, that means we can all live the way we want. And so those of you who are praying for the dead, there is nothing like that in the scripture. The scripture is clear. It says it's appointed to man to die once after that is what? Is judgment. That's why we, we need to read uh, preach the correct gospel and live according to it. So the only thing I'm afraid of is that he will not tell me and say, I ask you to go and give a cup of water to somebody, you didn't do it. I ask you to go and help a pastor somewhere, you didn't do it. I ask you to, that's the only thing I'm afraid of. I ask you to support your wife. That's why my wife, my children, all of them, none of them will ever stand, be, they cannot stand before God and accuse me that I did not give them the platform for them to do whatever it is that God wants them to do in their life. That thing nobody can accuse me of. So that's the only thing that I'm afraid of. Oh, you look like 
But brother Paul said, look, can you imagine somebody, somebody served God so well. He said, he said, he said what? He said, there is a clan. There is a clan that is what that is laid ahead of me. Many of us, the only time we read about that scripture is when we go to funeral. You are not living for an eternal crown. One of these days, I'm going to preach on that. We ought to live for what, when you are living for an eternal crown, you will not need anybody to ask you to come to church. You don't need anybody to ask you to stop. Uh, by the way, one of the scriptures that I read is that uh, in your heart, the Bible says that uh, keeping the word of God in your heart make you well. So in the place of prayer, God wants to show you, I said, look what you need. You know, he told me, I, I, I said, Lord, so this thing, why are we going to say, eat egg? I, I never knew egg has vitamin D. You say, but how come you didn't know? You, you, know, you know, there's just something we study in school. You just don't pay attention to them. Do you understand? Some things that somebody tells you and say, eat beans. You say, ah, I don't like beans. <laughs> and you didn't know that the reason they're asking you to eat beans is not because whether you like it or not. It's for your own health. Are you following me? Uh, somebody tells you and say, I don't work too hard. I say, oh, I've got to pay bills. Okay, yeah, you keep working like that. Something is going to knock you down one day. All the working hard and everything, all the money you collected working hard. Will you do what? You will spend it on that thing. Don't do work-life balance. Are you, are you with me? Somebody said, go on holiday. It's too expensive. Yes, oh, fine. okay, fine. The money you did not spend going on holiday, you will spend it on something that is not holiday. Are you with me? So it's not a question about whether you like it. It's not my thing. It's not a question of my thing. It's about what is going to help you. How did I even get into that? Okay. So, see the answer that God gave Elijah. Let's go back to that scripture. And let me close. I, I haven't, Lord, please have mercy on me. <laughs> I hope that I have preached what you want me to say today because I have not started my message at all. He said, look at the response, that same verse. Look at it. He came before God and he was complaining. Like most of us, we complain before God. And we expect, look at the answer that God gave him. Look at it. God said, look at it. What did God do? He gave him instruction about the work he has to do before what? Before he died. This man wanted, oh, you didn't know he said that. Go to, let's go to, let's go to verse. Verse what? Verse what is that? He said, I want to die. He said it. Hey, verse 4. Quickly, flash, flash 4 to us. He said, he said, but he himself went a day's journey into this man. This man, he was a prophet. A prophet ran away and left his servant. You see, all of your spiritual father that you are following, all those prophets, they will leave you. They will leave you. They will abandon you. The only person that will not abandon you, that will not leave you, is what? Is your heavenly father. I, I'm not saying it because one day they are going to pass on. They cannot live 150 years. Are you following me? So they will leave you one day. Are you with me? So Elijah left his servant. Look at it here. Look at what he said. He said, look at it. He said, enough of this. God do what? God take my life. But God still have more for him to do. Who are you? Thank you, man. Who are you who want to take your life? I speak the word of the Lord to you today that you will not take your life in the name of Jesus. You will not give up. You will not fail. I pray for you today. I know the enemy wants to sift you and the enemy wants to bring you down. I pray to you today. I pray for you today that your faith will not fail. In the name of Jesus, strength come on the inside of you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit of fear. I rebuke that spirit of doubt. Whatever it is that is making you to want to give up, I command it in the name of Jesus that that thought leaves you right now in Jesus' name. You will not give up. You will not give up. I said to you that you will not give up in the name of Jesus. God has a plan for you. This is not the end. Yes, let somebody say, this is not the end of my life. I refuse to give up. I am coming out of prison. Somebody shall say, I am coming out of this prison. And when I come out, it's a promotion. Let somebody say, say I am coming out. I am coming out of this prison of life. Say, I am coming out 
of this prison of lie. Say, I am coming out. Wherever I am now, I am coming out. Say, devil, I am announcing to you right now. I am coming out. Coming out. Coming out. I am coming out. In the name of Jesus, say, say, I'm coming out. Say, I'm coming out. I come out of depression. Say, I come out, I've come out of depression today, not by my power, not by my mind, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. I come out of this fear, the spirit of fear that has crippled me, that has scared me. I come out for you. I set myself free from you today in the name of Jesus. That's how you claim your faith. You can see what I'm talking about. Even though we are not praying, we, you, can you feel joy in your spirit right now? So he went before God. He said, I'm about to die. And the first thing God did, God didn't talk about him dying. God showed him a vision. Let's go back to verse 15. Let's see what God said. This is so good. We are using this scripture to interpret Matthew chapter 6. What did God say? God said what? He said, go to verse 15. He said, God said, and go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hesel to be king of Syria. Verse 16, anoint Jehu to son of Nimi to be king over Israel. And he said, what? Anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, of Abel, Mehola, to be the prophet in your place. Somebody say, I am not ready to die yet. I have an unfinished an assignment. I am have unfinished assignment. God say, have plan for my life. I am not ready to give up yet. I am not ready to give up. I'm not ready to faint. I'm not ready to die. God has a plan for my life. God has a purpose for my life. There is a song that I need to release. There is a book that I need to write. There are people that God has called me into. There are nations that need to hear my voice. I am not ready to go yet in the place of prayer. My God will speak to me about my future. And when God showed him, thank you. You can go and read the rest of the story. When he was now about going, <laughs> and God now called him and said, hey, by the way, come. <laughs> he said, by the way, come. I have left, what, yet 7,000 people who have not bowed down. He went in the place of prayer with that in his mind. But God did not address that first. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When your focus shift in the place of prayer from you to God, when your focus shift from your prophet, your pastor leading the prayer to God, guess what happened? You will begin to sense his grace. That was what happened to Elijah. The first thing God did was to shift his focus from what was occupying his mind. What was weighing him down. Are you with me? Let's pray. Lift up your hands and let's begin to talk to God now. Like I said, I will start from where I finish. I haven't even started. Lift up your hands. Join me in midweek services online on Zoom. Um, I'll continue to do this on prayer. On Friday Bible study, I will continue with this. You know, and then the next time, in the next video, I will also continue with this. Begin to pray to God. Say, Lord, help me to shift my focus. This as from today, help me to say, I need to start sensing your grace. I realize that there is more that you want to tell me. I have read about the story of even a prophet that wanted to die. Elijah wanted to die, but he didn't know he was meant to raise Elisha. You know, Bible scholars say that, you know, he lived another 10 to 20 years. You know, I haven't verified myself. But Bible scholars say he lived another 10 to 20 years. Somebody who wanted to die. 
somebody who wanted to die. What is that situation of life that has brought you to the point where you said you want to die? God is said, I have a work for you. I'm going to extend your life. The same way Abraham gave up in Genesis chapter 15. He says, seeing that I go childless. But God said, no, no, no. Your servant will not inherit what you have. I speak to you today, the sickness will not destroy you. Your boss will not destroy you. Whatever you are going through will not consume you because God has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. But first and foremost, tell him, say, Lord, help me to shift my focus. I've been thinking too much about my problem. Say, I've been thinking too much. Say, I have been thinking too much about problem. I have doubted you. Now I am even living in fear. I've been thinking too much about the dream that I had. I want you to come before him to say, Lord, help me. He's the only one that can help you to purge your heart by his blood. Tell him, say, Lord, I've been thinking too much about what my husband said. I've been thinking too much about what my boss says. I've been thinking too much about the law, the regulation. I've been thinking too much about the letter that I got in the post. He said, this letter has been disturbing me. I've read a lot of things. I'd rather than it helping me, I've been thinking too much. Say, Lord, help me to shift my focus from all these things that I've been thinking about to shift my focus to you every time I pray. Say, as from today, Lord, when I kneel down to pray, when I am standing to pray, Lord, the first thing I'm asking you, now that I know that you know more than I do in the place of prayer, I can see how Elijah told you, told you everything you know already. Say, Lord, I come before you today. I need your help. Help me to shift my focus when I am in your presence. Say the first thing, maybe your, your own case, you don't even know him as your father. The first step is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want him to be your master. I want you to say this after, after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you today. I recognize that I'm a sinner. I want you to have mercy on me. Save me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Say, be my Lord and Savior. Say, Holy Spirit, I want you to touch my heart. Tell him, say, Holy Spirit, touch my heart. Touch my heart. Make me to know who I am really, who I am. Make me to know who I am. Make me to know that I am a child of God. Say, Holy Spirit, touch my spirit right now. Touch my spirit right now. Help me know that I'm in the presence of my father and that there will be a difference in my life. Lord, I thank you for this one. If you say that prayer, the address will be on the screen. I want you to please get in touch with us and we're going to send you some materials that is going to help you grow spiritually and you can attend all our online services. Thank you so much for taking that decision. Father, I want to thank you. I pray for this one. Thank you for the healing through this video. Thank you, Lord, for conviction. Thank you, Lord, because this word is like, you know, it's like a spirit that has caught through somebody's heart that is going to make them to take a decision. Lord, thank you because this word will cause us to repent genuinely in the way we relate with you. We thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Quickly, let's honor the Lord with our substance. See, God, did, God will never ask you to give him what you don't have. But if you know that it's God, has kept you, give, give you the wisdom. You know, they don't, they don't spend dollars. Let's not deceive ourselves. They don't spend dollars and pounds or you know, in heaven. But you, you, you give to honor God. What does it mean to honor him? To support his kingdom, to support his work. That's the reason why you give. So if the Lord places it upon your heart and you appreciate him as your heavenly father and you want to honor him with giving, I want to encourage you to do that. It doesn't have to be just to this ministry. You can support missionary, you know. Uh, you can support missionary anywhere you get spiritual food from. Anywhere. That's what the scripture says. If somebody sows spiritual things in, like you have heard this message, it helps you. It takes us money to put this together and do some things. If you want to give, go on our website, you know, you will see the bank detail, or you can message us. Put a message there, and then we'll provide uh, the bank is boy, you say, Oh, but why don't you put it on the screen? The Lord hasn't led us to do that. I'm not saying the people who did it, the Lord didn't lead them. That's not what I said. But you know, everything why that we do, we want to make sure that you know we are led by God. So thank you so much for watching this video. I want us to rise on our feet as we bring this message to a close. I do believe that this video has helped you. If it has, 
I want you to share this video with someone and let's preach the gospel together. Let's take our closing confession together. One, two, go. May God himself.